Okay, well, moving on from, let's say, management issues to mm -hmm. something a little bit more shop floory. Mm -hmm. um, Labels. Let's talk about labels. Labels are uh, key components of production process control, inventory management, traceability, worker safety, packaging, marketing, uh, basically any productivity raising activities. Um, their impact on quality, product quality, uh, you may not think about this, but their impact on quality is huge. Errors in labeling parts and materials during the production process, for instance, can lead to defective finished products. Uh, de depending on the, the product, label defects can cause otherwise defect-free products to be non-conforming to quality standards. Uh, you don't have to look too far to kind of see where that comes in, so let's look at a, a certain medical device and chemical companies. Compliance with strict labeling requirements is mandatory. In fact, one of the biggest reasons for product recalls is not defective products, it's defective or non-compliant labeling. Absolutely. So if your labeling isn't right within certain industries, um, that acts actually is a, a means for actually litigation. It's a non-conformance. It, right. non, so there's actually a, an element of risk management that comes mm -hmm. into labeling. So you need to consider labels as equally important as any other document or part in your quality management system. They really should be treated as such. So here to discuss the importance of label management is James Hartford, Jim Hartford, Manager of Customer Support at IBS America Inc. Hello Jim. Hey there, guys. How are you? Pretty good. How are you? How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. Well, before we get started, first of all, just to kind of set the stage, when we're talking about labels uh, within this context, what, what are we really talking about? Well, I mean, we see labels in just about everything that we purchase in life. Um, labels uh, can be anything from pictograms to 2D barcodes to standard barcodes, and even our RFID tags, which help you to identif and identify uh, a, a product in any place in, uh, it may be. Um, so, you know, I think that, you know, understanding um, that labels are used for many reasons and in many places is the, the importance of this. So when we talk about, so when you say like RFID and barcode, so we're talking labels that are used for, let's say, for tracking a product uh, throughout Correct. its throughout its uh, uh, lifetime, so it could be from, from cradle to grave, or it could be maybe just within the manufacturing environment. So we're talking about right. those kind of labels as well as informational labels that might be something that the consumer uh, sees, is that right? For instance, yeah, the chemical industry. When you, uh, when you uh, set up a, a container, you have to make sure that there is human readable and uh, a pictorial text on that label to, um, uh, to identify things as such as safety and how to handle that product and so forth and so on. These things are governed, say, by the FDA um, and, 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 and um, not the FDA, but the, the, uh, the chemical industry. Um, so, you know, you really, when you're thinking at a label, there's a lot of bits and pieces of data that go on a label that come from many different areas and then are governed by your standards and your regulatory bodies. And so, uh, you, when you look at a label, you don't, you don't really see just how important or uh, necessarily all the information that label is providing. Well, is this, is this really, like, how much of an issue is this? I mean, do people not really already give importance to labels? Is this really just an afterthought or, I mean, what, what's, what's been your experience with this? Well, I don't think that people don't really give an, uh, importance to labels, but I mean, I really don't know if they quite understand um, the, the levels at which labels are used for, for traceability, right from the supply chain through the production line, out the distribution center, and how it's used for, you know, recall purposes, and, um, and just how it really describes that product and, and the product's life cycle. Um, and, and again, the importance of, of safety and, and uh, HASCOM issues uh, that, that may be related to a particular product. But I really think what, what, what they don't understand is, the, is just what goes into producing a label, label design to uh, process management of that label, and uh, making sure that that label is uniformly produced across all production lines, uh, avoiding the silo approaches to uh, label management. So, uh, so uh, actually, great lead-in. Yeah, <laughs> you talk about silo approaches. So, give us an example of how label management can be or should be a part of your your quality management system. Well, you know, like anything, you need control systems, and um, if you're dealing with uh, with purpose-designed uh, approaches to label management, such as silo systems. Um, 
you run the risk of, say, one production line in China uh, uh, designing and developing the label uh, in one format versus one in the U.S. So you could technically get a product with, with um, uh, multiple different level, uh, multiple different design approaches to labels. What a quality management system can do is it can help you in the uh, change management process of labels, bring in the the appropriate personnel together so that they can sit around a table and make the appropriate decision decisions for label formatting, so that there is uniformity and uh, centralization of how that label is going to be rolled out of the shop floor. Uh, and then in addition, it, it provides the ability to process, uh, to create process documentation um, to build around the label design proce uh, pr procedures and, um, and, and train your, your shop floor um, operators so that they are uh, implementing uh, these labeling systems correctly. Hey Jim, talk, talk a little bit about, about risk, and, and we touched on risk a little bit here, and, and maybe walk us through some scenarios uh, about you know, how, how labels are used, if, if there is a recall for instance, and, and what, is, what is the problem if the labeling is not good labeling, and, and how that works versus good labeling in the case of a recall, let's say. So in the case of a recall, I mean, um, if, for instance, uh, I, I received a product recently, and um, the the uh, instruction manual and the information in there did not match the actual product that I purchased. So it was actually for a previous version of that product. So in 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 light of that, you could have um, uh, a lot or, or uh, a particular version of a product that went out the door where they affixed the wrong version of the label. Okay. So on a recall, there's no traceability for that. You you've got a product out there with the wrong label on it. You're pulling the wrong product back. Gotcha. Well, thanks, Jim. Well, you know, Jim, we got to run, um, but I want to tell everyone out there before we let you go, we have a webinar with you and uh, on this uh, coming Tuesday, the 29th of January. That's going to be at 2 p.m. Eastern, right. 11 a.m. Right. Pacific, and Dirk's hosting, and you're going to be uh, joining in on that that call, that webinar. So we want everybody to go out and register for that. You can register right below the player page right here and uh, and check that out. It's going to be a good webinar. We look forward to talking to you uh, then next week about this, Jim. Fantastic. Thank you guys for having me. Okay, thanks, Jim. Thanks, Jim. We'll talk to you soon. Take care.